Hi, this is Dr. Ross. This is the first of two lectures or video lectures for organization of the body. This is for both my and Dr. Camp's Anatomy and Physiology 1. Uh, from this lecture, you should be able to identify body cavities and the organ organs they contain, describe membranes, and name and describe body planes. One of the ways the internal organ organs of the body are organized is through body cavities. Now, the posterior body cavity, or what is sometimes called the dorsal body cavity, is subdivided into two smaller cavities. This is going to be the cranial cavity, uh, which is in uh, that upper area. This houses the brain. And then the other subdivision is the vertebral or vertebral cavity, which encloses the spinal cord. Now, just as the brain and spinal cord make up a continuous, uninterrupted structure, the cranial and spinal cavities that house them are also continuous. So this cav these two cavities, although they're subdivisions, are going to be connected. Now, the brain and spinal cord are protected by bones of the skull, <clears throat> and vertebral column, uh, and they also are protected by the cerebrospinal fluid, which is just a colorless fluid produced by the brain, and it serves to cushion the brain and the spinal cord. Now, the anterior cavity, which is also referred to as the ventral cavity, has two main subdivisions as well, the thoracic cavity and the abdominopelvic cavity. The abdominopelvic cavity is then further divided into the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity. So starting with the thoracic cavity, it is more superior to the, uh, in, this, in this cavity, and it's enclosed by the rib cage. Um, it contains the lungs and the heart, which is located within the mediastinum. And of course, within the medium stinum, the heart is located more specifically within uh, the pericardial cavity, and the lungs are located within the pleural cavity. Now, the diaphragm, um, <clears throat> which is located below, forms the floor of the thoracic cavity and separates it from the abdominopelvic cavity. The abdominopelvic cavity is the largest cavity in the body. It's further subdivided, as I mentioned, into the abdominal cavity, which houses uh, the majority of the digestive organs, and the pelvic cavity, um, and that houses the reproductive organs and the urinary bladder. Notably, a membrane does not physically divide the abdominal and pelvic cavities. Okay, so these are, these are not divided specifically by a membrane. Now, the thoracic and abdominal cavities um, are also covered or contain serous membranes. So this image here is showing the serous membrane uh, that lines the pericardial cavity. Okay, so this is going to surround the heart. Much the same way, uh, if you had an, a balloon that was underinflated, you could drive your fist into that balloon, and it would form uh, this structure located here, where you can see this man or possibly woman's fist is, is kind of punching into this balloon. You have the, the one continuous um, part of the balloon, the, the, the rubber or latex part of the balloon, and then inside the balloon you have this air space. So this is uh, very similar to how the serous membranes are. Okay, so what you have within the serous membrane is uh, the visceral pericardium. Uh, in this case, I'm saying the pericardium because we're talking about the pericardial cavity, but you would have the visceral layer, and this is the membrane that's going to lie up against the organ itself, okay? Or, and sometimes we refer to the organs as viscera. So the visceral layer will lie next to the viscera or the organ. The parietal layer of the membrane will line the walls of the, the body cavity. It will be the outer membrane here. And then in between those two uh, parts, you have this space, all right? And this is going to be the, um, the fluid itself. And the fluid provides cushion um, and reduces friction resulting from movement from whatever um, 
movement is occurring within the membrane. So in the case of this one, the beating of the heart would be the movement, and the fluid uh, within this cavity, <clears throat> the serous fluid, would cut down on the friction resulting from that movement. So there are three serous cavities um, in the body and associated membranes. You have the pericardium, uh, which is the membrane shown here. It encloses the pericardial cavity and surrounds the heart. The pleura is the serous membrane that encloses the pleural cavity. Uh, recall from the previous slide, the pleural cavity surrounds the lungs. And finally, the peritoneum. This surrounds, uh, this is the membrane that surrounds organs in the abdominal pelvic cavity. Okay, so next I'd like to talk about the abdominal regions and quadrants. So it should be pretty clear at this point that the abdominal pelvic regions contains many organs. And to better communicate pain, for example, by a patient, um, or injuries, um, healthcare providers will typically divide up this cavity into either nine regions or four quadrants as shown in this image. Now, the regional approach subdivides the cavity with one line immediately inferior to the ribs and one line immediately, um, one immediately superior to the pelvic, pelvis. There's also two vertical lines drawn as if dropped from the midpoint of the clavicle, which is your collarbone, and those are shown here. So there are nine regions that result from this. So I want to start out with the middle region, which is the umbilical region. This will center around the navel. Uh, so to me, this is an easy place to start because your navel is where your umbilical cord is. So it's easy to remember the umbilical region. Above the umbilical region is the epi, uh, epigastric region. Recall from your terminology that the prefix epi means above and gastric refers to the stomach. So much of this area is above the stomach. The hypogastric region, which is the region below the umbilical region, um, is going to include areas below the stomach. Hypo is below. Okay, so then we have the left and right regions. There's the left lumbar region. Now you may be thinking this is not my left, but in this case left and right is referring to the patient left and right. So there's the left lumbar region and right lumbar regions. So lumbar is often, we think of the back when we think of the lumbar, but it also describes, not only does it describe part of the spine, but it describes part of the abdominal region below the diaphragm. diaphragm. So this would be the left and right lumbar regions in the abdominal region. Next to the hypogastric region, we have the left and right iliac regions. Uh, iliac refers to inguinal regions, so these two regions are left and right of that inguinal region. And then finally, we have the left and right hypochondriac regions. Um, again, patient left and right. Now, chondro refers to cartilage, um, and there's cartilage located within the rib cage, and so that is where this left and right um, hypochondriac regions refer to. It's not an area of the body that thinks it's sick. Now on the quadrant system, this is much, much easier. This is, um, so basically what you have here is um, an, a, a system that subdivides, subdivides the cavity with one horizontal line and one vertical line, and it, it, it intersects at the patient's navel. So these are simply named left, right, upper, and lower quadrants, again in relation to the patient's left and right, and these are also commonly used in the medical field. Now it's important for you to learn and identify these regions as well as the organs or portions of organs that are within there. We'll, we will be expecting you to know that and we will test you on them. So now I'm going to move on to body planes. Um, so body planes have several uses in the anatomy field, um, and they are often used in medical imaging techniques, um, and this allows um, medical practitioners to observe uh, the function of internal anatomy. A plane itself is just an imaginary two-dimensional surface that passes through the body. 
A section would be like a plane, but it wouldn't be imaginary. Typically, um, when a, bi a biopsy may be done, a section may be made, so a, a, a a thin plane of that biopsy will be removed um, and that will be examined possibly under a microscope. But when we're referring to imaging, um, it's going to be obviously an imaginary section because we can't really cut anyone in half um, and expect to observe, observe them functioning. So the um, <clears throat> So there are three reference or standard planes that are used and are shown in this slide. We have the sagittal plane. This is the plane that divides the body, or it could just divide an organ vertically into left and right sides. Um, if this vertical plane runs directly down the middle of the body, perfectly down the middle, it's called the mid-sagittal or median plane. Okay. Now this plane can be moved either left or right to look at different areas of the body uh, when we want to look at them in this orientation. The uh, frontal plane or coronal plane is the plane that divides the body or an organ. Again, you can use this just to look at a place or an organ. Uh, and this is going to divide it into the anterior and posterior portions of the body or organ. Uh, last, you have the transverse plane, uh, and this is the plane that, that divides the body or organ horizontally into upper and lower portions. Transverse planes typically produce images that we will refer to as a cross-section. Now again, before I move forward, I just want to mention that all of these planes, these are the standard planes, but these planes can be moved left and right, up and down, anterior, posterior. Um, so they can be moved around to look at the different parts of the internal anatomy. So what we're looking at here is some medical, uh, on the right of the slide is some medical images. You have a, um, a mid-sagittal section of the cranial region, uh, and you can see how that slices um, the brain into the two, which you can see one half of the brain. Uh, you can also do a transverse section. So in this case, we're, we're looking at a section, of, um, we're looking down on the brain. You can see the eyes there. And you can also have a coronal section. Of course, this looks like it's kind of just cutting the face off of the skull. Uh, and here we can see a different orientation. We can see the brain still, as well as the, the eyes and other cavities located within the cranial region or within the skull. And this is the final slide for this presentation. Please make sure you watch the second um, body organization lecture.